you know, the prayer of agreement is really very, very powerful. It is. And in fact, and I think married couples are, should be really good at it. Oh, yeah. We should really be good at that because, I mean, there should That's the should first be, place you go. Yeah. If, you, if you're married, the first place you go for agreement is with your spouse. Amen. That's just a no-brainer. Especially both two Christians. Yeah, we, yeah, two Christians. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to go to your spouse because they're supposed to be familiar with what you're dealing with. Amen. And because you pray together, because you study together, then they should be familiar with what you're standing on. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no more legal precedence than a husband praying with his wife or a wife praying with her husband about any issue that either one of them, you know, are confronted with. Amen. And not only that, but when other people are not present, you still got somebody in your corner undergirding you. Because, I mean, it might be something you're dealing with in particular that really may not directly affect me, mm -hmm. but it affects me because it's affecting you. Right. And therefore, I undergird and vice versa. You do that with me. So it, it, it could be an issue in our bodies or whatever. And you don't abandon the prayer. We, we include that in our everyday prayer time together because we are believing together for the same thing, for the same result. Right. Even though it's not your body being affected, you're believing for mine. Right. So that's the, that's the power that's in that agreement. And we're getting results because we are believing the same thing and we learn to harmonize. And then we don't, we don't let each other get by with a, a, a bad saying about it. You know, sometimes you get frustrated with something and you might say something out of your mouth and we'll correct one another because that power of agreement is still intact. That's right. And you can't let it slip and you can't let your partner get away with talking negative against you got to correct them That's right. and say, no, we can't talk like that. That's not what we're standing on. That's not what we believe in to come to pass. And see, that's, and you got to be in contact with somebody that you're in agreement with. Well, let's tweak that just a little bit more. Um, the Bible decrees and declares in a marriage union that the spouse's body is not their own. Right. It's the, it's the spouse's body. Right. So technically speaking, okay. if you are dealing with something, that's my body that's dealing with it too. That's exactly right. And vice versa. That gives me a greater legal right to speak to it and expect it to obey. Amen. Amen. And, and, and when you look at it like that, that, that oneness comes into place. Here. Yes, indeed. And uh, that's something that we don't always look at. We look at it as an individual thing. Mm -hmm. But if you're going through something, I'm going through it too because this is my body right here. That's right. And this is your body right here. Mm -hmm. So that's the way you got to know it. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of this, people look at it in theory, but in actuality, that's my what Lord. it really is. It see? is. That's right. That's exactly right. Because it's all over the, the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Twain becomes what? One. One. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and that's in in thought, in vision. Yes. And then when 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 you come together in intercourse, you become one anyway. Amen. That that's what that's all about. That's what it's all about. That's what consummates the marriage and makes it one. Mm -hmm. That's why you just can't turn and walk away after that, you know. That's right. And, and so, you know, there's, there's so many parameters that we have to consider that we don't consider when we talk about praying and agreeing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the scripture says not to be unequally yoked. Yes. And it says with unbelievers. But that's why the, the power of agreement is so important because you got to be traveling in the same direction for the same purpose, mm -hmm. desiring the same goal as an end result. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be really, really careful who you ask to agree. Suppose you ask somebody to agree with you that's jealous of you. <laughs> and, and, and you are believing for a better house. Mm. 
and, and, and they live down the street from you in the hood. And you're believing for a better house. And they're already jealous of you. And then you ask them to agree with you. They're going to sabotage that prayer. You're going to be on your own. And you won't know it probably. But people have these little quirks, you know. And you got to be careful who you, who you ask to pray with you. Because they got to want for you what you are desiring as much as you do. Amen. That's the truth. And it, it takes time for you to assess the people that you interact with. See, you, you, you got what's called an outer court. Then you got an inner court. And then you got the holy place. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. And you got to be really careful who you ask to agree with you. I, I, if, if the person wasn't in my holy place, I wouldn't ask them to agree with me. Amen. Amen. That's what's right. You got to be really, really, really particular. Because you both would incur warfare. That's right. As a result of this agreement. And you have to know that the person you're asking to agree with you can fight See, and win. That's real critical right there, baby. That they can fight and win. That's right. Because when they're home, if, if they're not your spouse, if, when they're home, they're going to be contending with things that they got to deal with. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they have agreed to uphold your prayer request. Mm -hmm. And they got to give time to your prayer request mm -hmm. with confidence that it's coming to pass. And then you can't defraud them by not upholding your own prayer. Amen. You see, a, a, a lot of times, People get some people that they think are spiritual to on, on their case and, and they're praying on, on their behalf and, and they just kick back and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then they wonder why. Right, why it's taking so it, long or why it didn't come it, to pass. Yeah, why it didn't come to pass. That's right. But see, this, this prayer communication, we, what we got to understand overall in the anatomy of what God set in motion to hear us is that he desires to hear us. Amen. That he is not trying to make it difficult That's right. for us to speak with him. Mm -hmm. And equally as desirous as he is to hear from us, he wants us to hear from him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people say, well, you know, when, when, when we talk, we often say, you know, well, the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. And I know some people be wondering, well, how do they know the Lord told them this and that and the other? <laughs> <laughs> because we have conversations with God. Amen. We, all day long. Yeah, we, we're talking to God all day. All day. And, and he's speaking back to us. Mm -hmm. So how, how can you know God spoke to you? If you say something to him, uh, in reference to something that you need an answer to, and then in a little while it comes up in your spirit, the answer to what it is. Mm -hmm. You need to learn that voice. Amen. Yes, you do. You need to learn that voice because God is, is training us to hear His voice. And, and, and the Holy Spirit is fused together with our spirit or us as a spirit and we should be able to hear that first and foremost because it's coming from within. Amen. What, 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 what messes people up is that they're, they're listening for it in their brain, in their mind, instead of an inspiration here and then letting it manifest in their thoughts. Amen. Because Amen. Th that's where God will speak to you first. Mm -hmm. But see, we got to learn how to talk with God. Now, for those of you that may not know, God is not Elizabethan. God is not thee and thus and thou and shouldest and should notest and all that. That's not the way God talks. Now, I know that's the way the Bible reads, 
Well, that's not the way God talks. God talks like you. <laughs> he talks like you. So if you want to have a conversation with God, let's say you're just sitting on your, on your deck outside by yourself. And you can say, hey, Father, how you doing today? I know you're doing well because you're the God of, of all good things. And, and I'm just so glad that I can sit down and talk with you for a minute. And let me share this with you, Lord. I'm dealing with such and such. Now, he already know what you're dealing with, but you know, you're having a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And you tell him, I'm dealing with this, and, and, and my take on it is such and such and such. Am I right, or should I be looking at something different? And then you just get quiet and give him a chance to talk to you. Instead of going, uh, doing all that and then said, amen, and then get up and go. <laughs> Well, you you got to know what amen means. Amen means so be it as I have spoken it. You don't want to close that down till you hear from God, Jack. Because <laughs> it could mess your stuff up. <laughs> and I, I have, you know, spoken to God. I, that's the way I pray. That's the way I pray. I don't, I don't pray uh, like religion taught us to pray. Mm -hmm. I don't pray that way. I just talk normal and I deal with the issue at hand. Amen. And I don't put any stock in how long the prayer is. Because God knows what you have need of before you even ask. So there's no need for me to filibuster God, you know, and take him all around the Marlboro Bush. We do that for the sake of the people that's listening. And, and somebody might hear one of my prayers and say, mm, he can't even pray. Because I just spoke what the deal was, and out of my faith, I believe God heard me. And, mm -hmm. and since I prayed according to his will, that's the name of that tomb. Amen. Because the, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, it says, He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the fact that he's the invisible God. I'm going to talk like he's the visible God. Because to me, he's visible. Mm -hmm. His word and him are one. When you open the Bible and look in the Bible, you're looking at God. So he ought to be visible to us. So, you know, there are a lot of things that we need to consider from a personable perspective mm -hmm. before we even ask someone to agree with us. A lot of times, you got to assess whether or not you even need somebody to agree. Mm -hmm. Because we pray the prayer of faith. Every prayer is a prayer of faith. And uh, sometimes we just need to persist in the direction that we're going and call those things which be not as though they as were. As though they were. Sometimes we think that if I can get 20 other people agreeing with me in this, it'll come to, come, come to pass quicker hmm. or faster. And it might be a shortage. <laughs> you, you, you know, <laughs> a power shortage in there somewhere. You might have a Judas in there throwing a circuit yeah. breaker. Yeah, because every person is tied to the event is being affected and is affecting the event. Right, because they have your permission. Your permission, that's exactly right, to be involved. That's right, they have your permission. That's why you have to be very selective about who you ask to agree. That's exactly right. Because everybody that's doing that is being affected. That's right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You know, um, I was thinking what you were saying about how the religious people, Jesus talked about them in over in Matthew, the uh, sixth chapter about how hypocrites love to stand in the synagogues and yeah. they pray these long prayers and, and they, they talk like, they, they don't even talk like they would if they weren't praying. Right. You know, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like you, if you're talking to the Lord, then you need to just talk to the Lord in, in your regular voice. You don't have to become uh, you don't have to be transformed into another person. Yeah. Just to pray to the Lord. You get another voice tone and 
Yeah. And your, your dialect changes and everything, you know. Yeah. And I was watching an episode of The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Westerns. I, I learned so much from them, man. I tell you, <laughs> God speaks to me through the Westerns. <laughs> I'm telling you. And uh, uh, this this guy was faking like he was a preacher, him and his cronies, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and, they, and, and they had stolen some gold and was trying to get it out the country. And so the Lone Ranger ran across him, stopped him, and the guy that was supposed to be in charge, he was lying and saying that it was his deceased wife in the coffin when it was gold. Mm -hmm. And he was talking, talking like them, you know, circuit preachers talk, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, when, when, when they rode off, Tonto says uh, that he's a, uh, he's a man of the claw. And Lone Ranger said, no, he's not. See, because real preachers don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, real preachers don't talk like that. <laughs> so this guy putting on an act. <laughs> and he was right. And he was right. You know, uh, <laughs> you, you got to be careful, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you really do. You, so you got you to gotta be firm and conclusive in your way of handling prayer before you go and ask somebody to agree because you might not need it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just like to say, don't be afraid to think that you don't have what it takes to, because a lot of times people might be afraid that they're not strong enough as a Christian right. or they don't know enough word. Well, don't make that an excuse to not get in the word or to become stronger. Um, and I recently, I, you know, I, 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 I love Joyce Myers, but she said something that struck my attention. She said, if you're complaining, you don't grow. So you got to stop complaining first, even about yourself, because if you keep saying to yourself, I don't think I'm strong enough to, to believe for this by myself, you'll never get there. That's right. Because you're complaining about you. And so you don't grow. When you stop complaining, you grow. And, and what happens is that, uh, um, when it comes to prayer, a lot of people are afraid to approach it because that very reason I just said, they don't think they have what it takes to get a manifestation. Now, it's something wrong with you as a Christian if you're constantly thinking that way. That means you're not spending the time you need with the Holy Spirit. You're not studying. And you say, well, I do study. No, studying and reading are not the same. Right. Because when you study the word, you you're taking this scripture and you and you're dissecting it and you and you read slower That's and right. and you're going back and you're asking the Holy Spirit to get involved and you got your references out and you you're comparing scripture to scripture and concept to concept. That's when you're studying. That's right. Now you just read. It's nothing wrong with reading, but you're not going to get the essence of something just from reading. You need to study the word. That's where you gain your confidence and you walk away and say, you know what? I don't know but this one scripture, but I know this scripture because I've researched it and I've studied it out and I've read this scripture. Sometimes I read a scripture 30 times or more in order to get what God wants me to say out of that or to hear out of that scripture. Mm -hmm. I will read that and I don't move any further. When my study time, I'm not trying to find this huge amount of scriptures that say I read or studied. I want to know that this is what I need to know. You know, uh, Paul was telling Timothy to study to show himself approved yes. unto God. Yes. A workman that, that need not, not to be, to be ashamed. ashamed. Yeah. And rightly dividing Divided. the word of truth. Mm -hmm. So if you can rightly divide, you can wrongly divide, right? Amen. And as a result of not studying the word, you can come away with a wrong precept. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do is I read very slowly through the scriptures, and when I find that one that I need to meditate, what I begin to do, I have this need to know what was the need for them to say what they just said. And I'll go back a whole chapter mm -hmm. and read slowly up to that point 
so that I can see why mm -hmm. this particular scripture is in the context that it's in. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised what you will hear, what you will see. Because mm -hmm. all prayer failures is a word failure. That's right. And, and, and when we come to understand that, because every prayer failure you've ever had is because it's something about the word you have, don't know. Well you, well, you know, when we talk about the prayer of agreement, now just think about the uh, time and the effort mm. that you put in understanding the word. Who are you going to get to agree with you that does the same thing? Exactly that's that's right. what I'm going to find somebody that I can trust to delve into the word that will allow the Spirit of God to speak to them Amen. so that we'll be on the same page. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to be concerned about what they're doing with my prayer uh, request. Amen. So, you know, this is, this is critical, man. Yes, it is. And what we want to prevent from happening is the religious approach to these things because mm -hmm. it's, it's so flippant, you know. And, and, and we don't want that to be the case. We want you guys to take time and make sure that you got things ordered correctly so that you won't spend more time than necessary receiving an answer from God. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is very important. So, so, so that reference scripture again says, if any two of you on earth shall agree as touching, and, and that's a critical point right there, mm -hmm. as touching, so that's where your faith comes in and you begin uh, based on Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to touch it with your spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to see it in the spirit, in the realm of hope. Mm -hmm. That's why you gotta know what the will of the Lord is for you. Yes. Because if, if you can't uh, find it within yourself to believe that it's the will of God for you to have a certain thing or to be a certain thing or to do a certain thing, then you are not going to be able to touch it. Mm -mm. And no matter who prays with you, that's right. it's not coming to pass because you don't see it. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I could say, uh, I'm believing God for such and such to happen in my life. And what you got to be able to do is to see me with that thing. Amen. You got to believe that I can attain that too. That's right. Because we both got to touch it with our faith. Exactly. Yes, we do. That's right. So, you know, it's important that you take that little extra time and make sure you dig into it so that you don't uh, miss something that would be critical down the road. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you and I do constantly is, you know, we, we, if, if we sense that one is getting a little weary, we're building each other. We'll talk the word. The, the fastest way to build your, your, the person that is agreeing with you up is through the word. We don't talk the nonsense and the nomenclature of the day. We're not talking the news at the moment. No, we got to build one another because if I sense that you're getting a little weary or you sense I'm getting a little weary, you say, hey, girl, Come over here and sit down. Let's talk, and let's get this thing straight. Let's let's grab hold, and we'll start praying one for another because that's how you keep the person. Cause the, everybody's under attack now because you're in this agreement, right. and you're under attack. So you got to know the person that's agreeing with you is being attacked too. So you just can't leave them over there while they uphold your thing. You got to encourage them. Say, look, I ain't. I haven't let my end go yet. If that's not a person in your home that lives with you. You got to let them know, I'm, I'm praying that this thing be quickly or whatever so that we can, this thing be done and I'm going to encourage you in the word. So when we talk, we're not talking the fear, doubt, and unbelief that the world would talk. Right. When I talk to my prayer partner, I am not talking the ways of the world. This is not the time to sit down and laugh and joke and talk a whole bunch of nonsense and then you say, okay, let's pray a little bit. No, this is the time to get in there and, and, and reinforce 
what you started in the beginning. Right. Because you can negate the whole prayer vigil through your own conversation with one another. That's right. And see, uh, just like when you are praying by yourself mm -hmm. and you confess that, okay, by his stripes I'm healed, and then you turn right around and say, oh, I'm sick as a dog. You know, now you got to start over again. Yes, you do. That's why you got to make sure that your <laughs> partner know how to keep his or her mouth. That's right. You know, that's why they got to care about your outcome as much as you do. That's right. They really do. They, they have to care as much about your outcome as you do. And, and you, you made a statement just a moment ago about them incurring warfare. See, that's something mm -hmm. that I would consider before I ask the person to agree with me because I know that if I'm incurring warfare, they're going to incur warfare too. Amen. Yes, they are. And whether or not they can uphold the battles that would come against them on my behalf. Mm -hmm. And see, they might not want to. Amen. You know, this, I got enough problems of my own. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no time to fight your battles. Well, see, that's going to narrow down the field <laughs> of who I'm going to ask. See. Yeah. So uh, yeah. there are a lot of little things that we need to consider when it comes to the prayer of agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we say it quite a bit about that this evening. And uh, I'm just grateful that the Spirit of God is unveiling these truths so that we can get a hold of them and be more potent in our prayer visual. Because we got some things, people, that are about to come up that all of us are going to have to be in agreement about. Amen. I'm telling you right now. I mean, it, it, it's some things that's going to be really, really big that we're going to step off into some things in just a, a little bit that you might not can figure out how in the world we're going to get it done. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's already done. Yes. Amen. And we got to be like Abram. We got to go looking for that land that's, right. that's flowing with milk and honey, man. Yes. Because God already sanctified it for us. Amen. And, and you're ordained to be a part of that, regardless of how you feel or how young you are in the Lord, you know, you, 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 got, to, you got a part in all this. And see, God can uh, accelerate your growth just My out Lord. of your obedience. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So we want you to be in agreement right now for us coming out of this place. Right, you got to desire it as much as we do, because we're not going to let it slip. Because we're going to come out of this place, Amen. One way or the Lord. other, this year. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Well, that's all the time we got right now. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your word, thank and you, we Lord. thank you that. And you are faithful to stay and watch over to perform it. And you give us desires that we can bring to pass because it's your mm -hmm. divine plan for our lives. Thank you. So I just pray for the people, Lord. Uh, I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that aids us in maturing the people so that we can do the work that you call us to do. And I decree and declare that every person on the sound of my voice right now is more than capable of getting it done. And we just give you praise and glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of so Jesus. So thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Well, praise God. Did you learn anything tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we'll see you next time. And remember this, those of you that are watching by the Internet, that Jesus is the Lord of glory. If you would like to support Rapture Ministries financially, you can do so online. Go to raptureministries.org and click the Give button. There you can give securely through PayPal. If you're one of our local members, be sure to include your CID number and your giving breakdown. We thank you for every gift. You help make all of this possible. Thank you. The Abiding Word Principle is actually the foundation, I could say, for receiving all the promises of God. A lot of times Christians don't understand the process. See, that's, that's the key. 
And the Lord took me to the John chapter 15. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. And see, that was what caught my attention. The process of giving the word a chance to root and to settle inside of you to the point that you and the word become one. We need to have such an intimate relationship with the word by its abiding in us that no matter what's going on, and we're sure what the outcome is going to be. And so I wanted it, it to be something simple that people could read and, and not be too overwhelmed, but could get the whole scope of what God was saying in the most concise way possible. Thank you for watching this broadcast. Now, we don't want you to miss when we go live again. So sign up for Rapture Go. Text the Rapture to 797979. Again, it's the word Rapture to 797979. We'll send you a text message the very next time we go live. Now, if you don't live in the United States, instead go to our website, raptureministries.org, and sign up for our mailing list, and we'll let you know the next time we go live with a new broadcast. Thank you for watching.